Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Microsoft and Anybuilds released Local Legend 15, the Dornier TO31, to coincide with the City Update 6 for Germany. This unconventional aircraft might possibly be the most fun that I've had in Microsoft Flight Simulator yet today. It's a bit of a handful to fly, especially through transitions from vertical flight to standard flight and back to vertical flight again. But there are assists and um, there's three levels of assist that you can use to help you with the vertical takeoffs. This one's very important that you read the manual. It has some pretty significant characteristics that you need to understand and have mapped properly. So using the hover assist, it's basically a hands-free hover and uh, it stays pretty stable. That's not the same as the co-pilot vertical engine control, which you need to enable if you're going to use the lift engines. I prefer manual control, so I turned all the co-pilot assists off. And after a little bit of time, you get the hang of it. It flies pretty much like a helicopter, but it's very sluggish to react, so you have to be well ahead of the aircraft. It's a little sensitive in the pitch axis, especially when it's in vertical flight mode or below cruising speed, but I find that that fine control is necessary once you get the hang of it in order to manage the aircraft for vertical takeoffs. In the co-pilot assist mode, I think is a pretty good compromise for how the aircraft would have operated in real life because it had two pilots to manage all the different control axes for the angle of the nozzles that are very similar to like what's on a Harrier, or the thrust of the vertical lift and the conventional engines. The modeling and detailing is excellent. It's got great textures and really good mapping. It looks phenomenal. And it comes with quite a few outside views already set up. They're very good. It definitely looks the era that it's from. In the default silver library, it almost looks like an Airstream from the 1960s, which kind of makes sense. Its maiden flight was in 1967, so a relic of the past, but a pretty cool relic of the past. Let's take it for a quick flight around Friedrichshafen and check out the new scenery at the airport as well as the photogrammetry for the city update and enjoy this new aircraft. After a couple of flights, you get the hang of how to manage the aircraft and to deal with the extra gauges that you have. So the pitch gauge helps you get the attitude correct, which is about seven degrees of nose up in order to take off vertically without translating uh, forward, backwards, or side to side. After you nudge it forward and get a little bit of momentum, you can start to add throttle of the main engines and transition into forward flight. It's pretty smooth. It's, it takes a bit of, of getting used to, but once you get the hang of it, it's uh, it's pretty, it's pretty intuitive, intuitive, almost second nature. Slowing down is a little bit more challenging and bringing it into a hover in order to land. Not impossible, but a little bit harder than takeoff. pretty powerful I and mean, it's pretty quick. Once you transition into a conventional forward flight, it's pretty snappy on the controls. It's very responsive. It's quite a bit of fun to fly. It's 
not really my intention to do a tutorial with this video. Um, Anybuild's actually already put out a pretty good video that gives you some tips and hints on how to fly this a little more efficiently and how to get along with it a little better, I guess, or what to expect and how to manage it through different flight regimes. comes with seven different liveries to start off with and they all look pretty good. Um, you get two silver liveries which were actually depicting the two prototypes that actually flew, the E1 and the E3. And then there is a, an olive green and a camouflage livery and also search and rescue, uh, maritime search and rescue livery, as well as the Xbox uh, flying club liveries. It also has an aircraft configuration tablet, or EFB. It's still a pet peeve of mine to say that, but um, it has a moving map on it, so if you set your flight from the main menu, you can see that flight line on the map. And then it's got a few options uh, to enable the nose cone and to set a couple other settings. Um, like there's a warning that first pops up when you get into the aircraft, you have the ability to turn that off. I've been flying it in 2D mode today, but it really shines in VR. The cockpit is so well detailed. You can lean forward and look over the dashboard and see the wiring harnesses as they're routed through you know, the, the windows up front and all the structure looks great. It's really, really well modeled. One thing that did kind of catch me off guard is how quickly it burns fuel in vertical flight mode. So if you spend a lot of time in the vertical flight mode, just be aware of that. You might, you might run it out of fuel because it, it really burns fuel quickly in the vertical flight mode. It's very powerful, but it guzzles gas. I found it easiest to manage the approach when you take it slow. Very similar to how you would come in for an approach in a helicopter. You just take your time. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. I know that the developer said that it was more or less based on trying to come in for vertical landings in a prepared area, so they had in the manual a uh, five mile final and then a transition at three miles where you're, you're kind of practicing um, into a large area for a slow approach. But I think it's very controllable and with a little bit of time and practice once you're familiar with the area, 
uh, with the aircraft, I don't see any reason why you couldn't manage uh, confined area landings in unprepared areas if you set up your approach properly and do a high recon and a low recon to slow it down. It's very sensitive and very responsive. It's a ton of fun to fly. Thanks for watching. Be safe, be kind, and I'll see you in the next video.